In the bustling world of finance, entrepreneurship, and business media, one name undoubtedly stands out, and that is billionaire investor Mark Cuban. While some see him as an aggressive trader who manipulates markets by doing insider trading, his life has been ever-evolving and dynamic as the stock market itself. But who is the real Mark Cuban? Mark Cuban's journey began with very humble beginnings, just like a lot of the other famous entrepreneurs that we know. At a very, very young age, he showed a keen entrepreneurial spirit. As long as I can remember, I was hustling. I remember going to my dad while he was playing poker with his buddies and saying, Dad, I need some new sneakers. And he looked at me and looked at my feet and he goes, those tennis shoes you got on, they work. When you have a job, you can buy whatever you want. And one of his buddies that had to be drunk was sitting at the poker table with him. And he goes, hey, I got something you can sell. I got all these boxes of garbage bags. Why don't you sell them in the neighborhood and then you can take the money you make and buy your sneakers. This drive will be a defining trait in his future success. Mark's pursuit of knowledge led him to study at the University of Pittsburgh and later Indiana University, where he studied business. And along the way, he started multiple companies that failed at most of them. But it was these early experiences that ignited his love for business and finance and would be the platform to catapult his career in his later years. Mark Cuban had his first taste of success when he started a company in college called Micro Solutions. And later on, he sold that company to CompuServe for a whopping $6 million. However, Mark Cuban's watershed moment that put him on the map came during the heart of the dot-com boom when he started a company called Broadcast.com. At the time, this was a revolutionary internet radio streaming company, and it caught the eyes of Yahoo.com. And in an era-defining deal, they acquired the company for $6 billion in stock. But what a lot of people don't talk about is how he hedged his portfolio with options so that if something went south with Yahoo, he didn't take a massive hit on his overall portfolio. And Yahoo came along and made us an offer. And all of a sudden, that stock price tripled, and I was a billionaire. We sold the company to Yahoo for stock. And I had seen stocks go up, and I had seen stocks go down. And I told Todd, my partner, I told everybody who worked for us, there's a good chance because this stock market is so highly priced that the whole thing could crash. Don't be greedy. Todd had the same. Pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. Don't get slaughtered. So I put together what they call a collar. And what that is, I sold some of the upside to that Yahoo stock that they gave me. And I protected myself by buying puts on the downside. Three months later, the internet stock market cratered. It was called one of the top 10 Wall Street trades of all time. And it taught me a hell of a lesson. When you just chase dollars, it never works out well. Now that he's a billionaire from the Yahoo deal, this opened the doors for other investment opportunities, even acquired the Dallas Mavericks, an NBA team that won a championship in 2011 over LeBron James. In his more recent years, Mark Cuban has stepped out into the world of crypto assets and actually has become a big advocate. And Bitcoin, Ethereum, and as well as some other altcoins have become pivotal assets in his overall portfolio. You have to look at investing at crypto the same way as you look at investing at, in anything. Do you think there's a value proposition there that consumers or businesses are going to use? If you think the answer is yes and you think it, it provides enough growth, then you invest. In 2022, Mark Cuban revealed that he experimented with something called yield farming. So Mark Cuban bought a project called Titan and he essentially lended it back to the platform. Well, come to find out, there was an issue in the underlying code that allowed people to continually buy and sell the token and make unlimited amounts of money. The token crashed down from $60 all the way down to zero, and this resulted in him losing over $200,000. The second mistake he made was due to lack of proper security protocols. He admitted that he hadn't checked his wallet in a long time, and then when he came back to it, he said that MetaMask had crashed. Uh, MetaMask is the most popular wallet that connects with pretty much all of the decentralized finance applications. And this totaled out to be $870,000 that he lost. So Mark Cuban's pivot towards decentralized finance shows his belief in the advancement of technology. And he's become an advocate slash spokesperson for the advancement of cryptocurrency technology, as well as proper regulations so that people don't get hacked and suffer the same losses that he did. The reality is you have to look for the utility or the value of any investment that you make. You know, you have to say, why are people buying Bitcoin? 
in, in reality, Bitcoin, just like an NFT is a digital version of art, you know, we compared it to the Mona Lisa. Bitcoin is the digital version of gold. Right. Gold, you know, people say, well, gold has real value as jewelry. Nobody needs gold jewelry. People like gold jewelry because, you know, it, it keeps a shine, et cetera, et cetera. There's a lot of reasons to love gold as jewelry. But if, if gold jewelry went away, the world would change, yeah. you know, and there's only a really there's a few manufacturing applications. But gold has value because people assign it value. And that's those types of investments are called store of value. They're kind of like commodities, like you just said. Bitcoin's the same way. It just happens to be digital. It's limited by an algorithm and how many that's created. So there's a scarcity factor. You can't just create it forever. And because of that, and because it's easy to transfer, it's easy in some cases to use for cross-border payments between country people in different countries. So there's some utility, but mostly people buy Bitcoin and own Bitcoin like I do because other people own Bitcoin. But I want to take the time to actually talk about some of his investment principles. So his first principle is actually diversification. You know, diversification, that's for idiots, right? Because you, because you, can't, you can't diversify enough to know what you're doing. I would say the more convicted you are on it, the more time you have to research it, the higher percentage it should make up in your actual portfolio. Mark Cuban's second investment philosophy is invest into what you understand. Today, there's so much money in these huge hedge funds, and it, then they have such professional research and in-depth research, there really aren't any advantages for the individual traders. And so my approach has always been, unless I know something specific, put it in cash. A lot of times, if you're invested into something that is just a hot tip from a friend or a family member, when things get tough, you might sell at the wrong time or you might not have any business being in that investment in the first place. Most of the money from investing has been made through long-term investments, and that's that concept is called value investing. When you're investing, you're actually being paid to be patient. It's important to be able to delay gratification because companies like Apple, companies like Amazon, companies like Google, it took years, decades for you to be able to make life-changing returns. So sometimes you have to sit and wait through that. Mark Cuban's next philosophy is to not just blindly follow the crowd. No one that's made substantial profits investing made it from following someone. Maybe sometimes you can get lucky, but the best investors are the people who do the research and they find out what the good investments are first and they get people to copy them. And at the end, they're selling them their bag. A lot of times, good investments seem like terrible ideas at first, but then they end up being massive successes after. The best investments lies on the edges of technology. What I mean by that is, and Paul Graham referenced the same thing, if technology is a drop of water that's splashing onto the world, the opportunities are gonna be on the edges where the water hasn't hit yet. Mark Cuban famously said that he missed out on what could have been his greatest investment through investing into a VC deal where he could have had exposure to Uber. Now, where he messed up was that he invested into one of Travis Kaepernick's companies before then, but it failed and he lost money. So he just didn't think that he was an entrepreneur that could actually get the job done, so he passed on the investment. So my name is Vincent Halliburton. I've been in crypto since 2017. Back in 2019, I started my own cryptocurrency hedge fund. And I'm also the co-founder of a project called know it House, which is designed to be a company that educates you on how to do things like yield farming, make sure your assets are secure. Yield farming done correctly is the best way to generate passive income on a risk-adjusted basis. You just have to know what you're doing. And this opportunity isn't going to be around forever because right now, mainstream financial banks and institutions aren't legally allowed to provide liquidity within the decentralized finance space. So for the first time in history, everyday investors like you and I are able to put our liquidity on these decentralized platforms and facilitate trades and make passive income.